we go through and we basically seek and we fight uh, tooth and nail to make things um, from just about every component as much as we can, uh, utilizing American-made components also. I started in my garage. I started with um, a collection of sewing machines that I've basically been fanatical about. And these, these, these machines are basically period correct um, industrial sewing machines from somewhere, anywhere between sort of the early 1900s to 1950s. I guess that really ties into you know what American Brand Project is after with respects to what you do and many other people within industries. Now that you're aware of what American Brand Project, what do you think Rising Sun has to offer to people who want to follow American Brand Project and this new movement that's been going on? We're shedding light on American manufacturers and makers. What we contribute is something that is very visceral. It's very much so, um, it's, it's real, it's there. It is something tangible. They can be part of something through a level of ownership. There's a lot of American history here that, that kind of contributes into the whole being an American brand. How has that been for your love of American history? Mm. Kind yeah. of like what you're doing specifically. Yeah. But first, I'm going to take it back to, to the name itself. A lot of people actually say, um, "Isn't the name Japanese?" I said, oh, "Absolutely not." And that's where I just want to make sure that even the name itself. When I was thinking about when I when I left the old company that I used to work for, I wanted to do what I thought was the right thing to do, which is manufacture American-made goods and utilizing the best of the best. Everything from the fabric to the hardware to um, most, as many of the components, components as possible. So the name itself also had to have a reflection on that. So Rising Sun basically came out of um, a sure happenstance. I happened to be in, um, in Philadelphia visiting uh, uh, my wife's family and we went on the tour of the um, the Independence Hall, and when we're in Independence Hall, you know, the tour guide said, "Okay, this is this item, and it's that item, and over there is the Rising Sun chair, and it's the Rising Sun chair. What the heck is the Rising Sun chair?" And she explained what the Rising Sun chair was. And uh, the very day when our founding fathers signed the Declaration of Independence, Benjamin Franklin sort of reclined back in his chair and was noted to say that he said, "I've often wondered if the chair, which at that point in time George Washington presided in, he said, I often wonder if that sun." was a setting sun or a rising sun. Today I know it is a rising sun. American. American, you know, I, I've made, I think I've said this in the past, I think, um, I think made in America is not an option. I think it is basically, it, it is our duty. It's our, it's our duty as, as citizens, you know, and say, you know what, we need to, to do what is right for, for us as a collective, as a group. Um, I think if you buy for whatever reason. I think most people feel as if their rite of passage is by actually physically being able to have almost a um, sort of a, a club member card, so to speak. And how you do that, and especially in this world of ours, is by actually purchasing an item that you've, you can actually physically say or that tells that you are part of you believe in that enough to basically contribute with your hard-earned dollars.